Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is hidden in game? I'm not really going to jump into the example on this one. I'm going to explain what it is and then show you why we might want to use it, if at all. Hidden in game is a node, if we're using the set version, that will allow us to set the hidden in game flag on a scene component. So something inside of an actor that has an actual transformation and a visibility property, a rendering property basically. And it will hide it when we're inside the game. Now what does it mean by that? Well, it's pretty simple. Let me go ahead and go into my test map. Here's my example blueprint. Let's drop it in the scene. And as you can see, it's a blueprint with a couple things attached to it. We have a root, a sphere, and then two cubes. Let's say I wanted the sphere to represent something. It's a person, it's a place, it's a house. But these cubes represent boundaries. Something I'm going to use as a developer inside the engine to mark something. However, when I'm in the game itself, if I was to hit play, well, as you can see, it's here. We may not want that. So that's what the hidden in game flag is for. If we go ahead and go down to one of our items and scroll down to rendering, we're going to find two options, visible and hidden in game. Visible is whether we see it. This is traditionally how you're going to hide or unhide an item when you're playing the game. Hidden in game allows us to still see the item. However, as you noticed, you may or may not have noticed, look at this shadow here. When I uncheck, when I check hidden in game, the shadow disappears. The item's still here, but the shadow's gone. What this is doing is telling the engine that when we play our game, we'll check this and hit play, we are not going to show that item. It is hidden in game during gameplay. If we were to stop it, we can see our item again. And of course the shadow is not rendered because it's going to go ahead and hide it automatically for us and it knows that. So if I was to go over here and let's go to my right cube and we'll set it to hidden in game and we'll go ahead and hit play. Maybe I'm using this to define, okay, I don't want this to be any farther than that edge. I want that side of it to line up with the edge and then this that way I make sure it's safe. I hit play and now all I see is my sphere and everything's good. Now you will run into a few issues here as you may notice collision is enabled. All we're doing is hiding the visibility for rendering. Because this item still has collision right here block all dynamic it's going to have an issue. I'd have to do something like set no collision and now you notice so I can walk through it. So keep that in mind Hidden in game is intended to allow you to hide something in the game, but not inside of the editor when you're using it. There are a few caveats here. So let's say I was to go to my root here. Let's go to this item right here. And I did actor hidden in game and I hit play. Well, it's going to work and it's going to work how we expected it, which is good. If we go to, however, for example, a sphere, a parent item, and we do hidden in game. And then let's go ahead and uncheck hidden in game on these two other children that are underneath the sphere and hit play. Well, only the sphere is going to be hidden, not the two children. It does not automatically propagate down from item to item, from scene component to scene component. It's for this item only. So this item itself is hidden in game only if this item is checked. If the root is set for check for hidden in game, well, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to be able to see everything. The root is a scene component, so it is only going to apply to itself. It's when I click on the main item itself, the actor itself, and choose hidden in game, that's when the actual entire blueprint will be hidden. That's actually a different node, which is covered in a different video. But that's something to keep in mind if you notice here, the actor itself doesn't have a visibility setting. So that's how you'd actually hide an entire actor easily inside of the game. Looking at the node, we will find there are, there are a few options. Let's look at it naked. We have the target, which is going to be a scene component. Then we have new hidden. This is the value for the hidden. Checked, hide it, unchecked, don't hide it. Pretty simple. And then we have propagate to children. This is handy when you want to actually have something like the sphere become hidden and everything underneath it. Let's go ahead and change this from the left cube to the sphere. And let's go ahead and hook up the sphere as our target. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's look at our item and hit execute. Oh, I need, let's close this. Get rid of my example item. 
hit execute. We'll spawn this in. Whenever I execute, we're going to hide the sphere, assuming I actually check the box. Third time's the charm. We'll go back in here and hit execute. And every time, I'm going to hide whatever items I have selected. And I have a bunch of items selected because, as you notice, I have both of these. Okay, fourth time's the charm. Let's set this up properly. There we go. Execute. Now we're going to hide the sphere. I'm toggling whether or not the sphere is hidden. Now, if I wanted the children to be hidden, remember we have, in terms of our layout, the sphere is the parent and two children underneath it. If we check propagate to children and go ahead and play, anything we do to the parent is going to apply to the children. So the parent's hidden and then the children are hidden, or the parent's unhidden and the children are unhidden. So there you go. Now, normally, you're not going to find much use for set hidden in game. Traditionally, you would do something like toggling the visibility, setting the visibility, things like that. And as you notice, this is pretty much the same thing. Both have scene components, both if it's hidden or visible, and then propagating to children. The main advantage of this is if you have something that's already set to hidden in game and maybe you want to use it for debugging purposes and see where it's at, maybe the boundaries, you have a debug menu, something like that, you can go and use the set hidden in game. Keep in mind, uh, let's uncheck this. I should probably have gone delete that. Let's bring that back. Go. We'll go back to our cube, plug our cube back in. Okay. Keep in mind visibility and, oh, here we go. Visibility and hidden in game are tied together. You can set hidden in game perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and run this and hit execute and you'll notice this one is not rendering i've told not to render because it's hidden in game if i was to go ahead and drag my item out set it to hidden in game right here and hit play when we start you'll notice it's hidden in game like it's supposed to be okay good everything's exactly like it's supposed to be however if we have hidden in game unchecked so we want to be able to see it like this but we are not rendering it. We have visibility unchecked. No matter what we do with the hidden in game, it's not going to matter. Visibility has to be enabled in order for you to actually see it, whether or not you have hidden in game turned on. So in this case, we tell it not to hide it in the game, but because visibility is off, it's going to not render. So keep that in mind. That's it. That's going to wrap up our set hidden in game node. It's going to take in a scene component. New hidden is whether it is or is not currently hidden. It's a boolean. Propagate to children means any children will also set hidden in game. Remember, it has to be visible first to hide it. And for the most part, this is used for editor things where you want something in terms of debug. But when you actually run it, it's not showing up on the screen itself.